archiving started. Hi, and welcome today to California State University Chico, our technology in learning and teaching. And I have Bill Malegi from the College of Business with me today, who's going to talk to you a little bit about his explorations in VISTA. Bill happens to be one of our 2009 Exemplary Online Instruction Award winners. So congratulations, Bill. Thanks, Anne. And um, he had done this presentation at our CELT conference, which was held here on campus in October. And he has uh, been very nice to agree to come back and present it today so we can archive it and get it on our website for all of you to enjoy. So, Bill, I'm going to ask you to take it away and let's see what you have for us. Today. Okay, thank you, Ann. Okay, today I'm going to be going over the presentation that I gave at the Kilt Conference uh, for Excellence in Online Instruction. And I'm going to be uh, explaining how I use the rubric for online instruction to do several things. And uh, are the slides loading? Okay. Good. Okay. So uh, the objectives I had uh, I have here for this presentation today is show you how that using the rubric for online instruction improves communication with the students, improves the students' learning experience and also reduces the instructional workload for the instructor. The methodology I'm going to use to communicate this today uh, is to demonstrate how I set my classes up using uh, VISTA prior to applying the rubric for online instruction. And then I'll show you examples of what I feel are pretty large improvements that I achieved after following the rubric. And again, we'll be showing before and after examples. Now, the rubric for online instruction is quite extensive, and my uh, intent today is not to cover all of the points in the rubric, but I'm going to highlight a few specifically that I think will help facilitate student learning and reduce the instructor's workload. Okay, the first category in the rubric is category one, learning support resources. And I'm going to talk a little bit about course specific resources and information for being an online learner. As you see here in this slide, I believe this is typical of how many instructors initially use VISTA. And what you see here is how I set VISTA up originally. I do have some course specific information on this course content page. I do have the syllabus and some tentative test dates and a few study guides. Uh, basically everything that I use for this course, uh, you see right here on the slide. Then if you look at the learning modules, you can see my learning modules are completely empty. I had no idea exactly how to use those or how they could facilitate the learning experience for the student and also reduce the instructional workload. So those are two examples of classically how VISTA is used by someone that um, uh, hasn't properly been trained or isn't experienced in the rubric. Now, after studying the rubric, you'll see that my course content page looks quite a bit different. Here you see we have, of course, the syllabus. We have a VISTA introduction guide and overview, which, will, which is actually a Camtasia video that will walk the student through how the course is set up and so they can hear me speak to the methodology and they can also watch me move through the VISTA site on their computer screen. So that's very handy. We also have uh, introduction and course content page and we could actually move to that. We'll go into one of the first learning modules. I'm showing you, what I've just clicked on now shows you what the students would see if they would have clicked on the introduction and general course outline uh, or introduction. This is linked directly to the first of the learning modules. So I'm going to click back to that slide. And here you can see we have uh, a welcome and an introduction. And in all of my learning modules, I have a PDF that explains the learning outcomes and goals 
and gives them a little flavor for what to expect during that, that week's class. There, here, since this is the introduction, there's obviously no learning objectives, but you can see this is what they'd see when they click into my first introductory learning module. They have, uh, they have the syllabus, they have the meeting location, and you can see all the information, the library resources, and I can't really see it on this screen, uh, so you and the audience can have a, a little better chance to read this, but you can see there's pretty much everything they need right there at their fingertips. Here what you can see is uh, the, all of the learning modules located. The one I was just showing you was the first learning module, the introductory, introductory learning module. So the student would click on that, and I'll do that and show you what they would see. It would take them in to the learning module, and again, you see all of the information is right there at their fingertips. Testing programs, if they need DSS support, they know where to go. Links to the main web page of the College of Business, marketing department web links, uh, research, how to do research and presentations. And I guess that, that doesn't work. Okay, so the next thing that I would like to demonstrate here is category two in the rubric for online instruction, which is online organization and design. Two of the points in that rubric are a well-organized and easy to navigate Vista site or an online learning environment, and aesthetic design that communicates course information clearly. Now, move down here, so we'll, we'll walk through that. Again, here you see this is the file manager, and this is how I did it my first semester. You see there's only one subdirectory there, and I certainly didn't create that. It was a default one from Vista. I cannot scroll down, but if I could here, you would see probably 100 random files all in basically which the root of Vista, which would be like the root of your C drive on your local machine. Uh, very unorganized and the problem with that, if you want to make changes or updates as you go semester to semester, it's very difficult. And again, I learned that the hard way. Now I'd like to show you what it looks like when you organize it properly. And I'm going to, I'm going to illustrate this by drilling down. Here you see, this is my file manager again. And I have individual subdirectories for everything. For instance, the, the learning module files uh, are contained in this learning module subdirectory. And what is stored in there is everything that belongs to a particular learning module, say week one, week two, week three, except for specific files like PowerPoints. And I'll show you what that means. Now I'm going to move to the next slide, which would be the same as if we were in Vista Live and I clicked on the subdirectory here, learning module files. So here you see all the learning modules, and I have subdirectories again for each week. We're going to drill down one more time. As you see, we're in the file manager. We're in learning modules. We're going to click on week four. And those are the specific files that are associated with that learning module. And again, you can tell where you are when you're navigating by looking here, file manager, uh, learning modules, week four, and these are the files that are contained in there. Again, it's just like a Windows directory uh, organizational structure. So here we have a marketing guide, we have periodical indexes, everything that I then highlight and bring in to the learning modules. The third category I'd like to talk to is uh, talk about is design and delivery. Two of the rubric points there, our course provides visual and auditory activities. Learning objectives are identified and integrated into the VISTA course content and course site. So two points that I would like to talk to here are that the course provides visual and audio auditory activities. Visual, as you see, see it, auditory, hear it, and kinesthetic, do it. A VAC is a little term that we're using here. 
Now, um, can we start this um, video here to give them a sample? If I click on this, will it start? Okay. Okay. Basically, that's unfortunate. Um, okay. What 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 basically if I were to click on the sample of the visual and auditory auditory technologies, what it would show you, you again as I explained earlier, you would hear my voice uh, describing the navigation in a particular portion of this Vista site, and the students would see. So basically, they get uh, uh, all three of the VAC items at one time. May I ask a question, Bill? Yes. Um, would you mind if I put that file with this archive so that people who are viewing the archive can then, at their leisure, click in and watch it? So I will put the link to it in the web article. That would be an excellent idea. And I apologize, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, not understanding that little bit of technology here, but I think that Ann's idea uh, will certainly cover that. And I, I really encourage you to take a look at that. It was produced using a program called Camtasia, and it has just a tremendous amount of uses, and we're going to talk about a few more of them as we proceed through this. Thank you. That's a very good point. Okay. Course provides visual and auditory uh, activities. One thing that I find very useful is the visual media in terms of video, especially in this international marketing class. Here on the bottom right hand corner of your screen, and this is in week two, the student can click on uh, the video and it will automatically come up and play on their PC anywhere where they have access to, to the internet and their Vista site, of course. And this happens to be a video uh, by the CEO of Domino's Pizza describing how they have taken their enterprise worldwide. I find that by having the media uh, available through the Vista site, it allows much more time for discussion of that material in class versus having to take 20 minutes to show it. So it, it really is a, a very positive thing and, this thing, and the students like watching it on their own as well, because if they want to watch it two or three times because they missed something, uh, they certainly can. So it provides quite a few advantages. Notice that, okay. Uh, okay, so now we're going to talk about learning objectives are identified and integrated. Each of my learning modules starts off with a PDF, as you see here, that shows for instance, this is Chapter 7, and we were discussing the international legal environment. So I try to use pictorials, and this is one of my favorites here, actually. Uh, I try to use pictorials that demonstrate you have to really be on top of your game and understand the legal environment in a foreign culture, or you can end up in handcuffs, or uh, even worse. So anyways, the visuals help, the students seem to like them, and I also put a bullet point list of the learning objectives. So, so when they enter a learning module, I just want to reiterate that that's the first thing that comes up is a uh, pictorial slash learning objective document like this. And I do that for, for all of the learning modules. Actually, this demonstrates that quite nicely. Here, they've entered week five of the political and international legal environment. And this is a screenshot from the student view in VISTA, and this is exactly what they see. The first thing they see is the document I just described, and over here they have the PowerPoint, the video segment, and all of the other information they need for that particular chapter. The fourth category and a couple of the points that I would like to discuss there are activities to assess student readiness. And this is where VISTA can really help with the instructional workload. And we'll, we'll show you. Um, I have under assessments a series of quizzes. And they're done on a weekly basis. The students have a given time frame when these are available. They start on a given date and they end on a given date. And they have uh, a certain amount of time to complete the quiz or the examination. And as an instructor, I can control all those parameters through VISTA. So I just wanted to point that out. 
the beauty of this is, again, you don't have to take classroom time for quizzes, and when it gets to the instructional workload, well, if you set the quiz up in VISTA, VISTA automatically will grade the quiz for you, and it will automatically enter those scores into the grade book. And some of my sections are rather large. If I have 100 people, and as instructors, you know just the, the slash clerical work of reading down a list of 100 quizzes and entering them into the grade book, not only is it time consuming, some people are really good at that. Sometimes it's a little difficult for me, and you make one mistake, and it uh, certainly can create a lot of uh, anxiety for the student and yourself trying to go back and, and figure it out. So the assessment feature certainly helps the student because they get to see how they're proceeding with regards to grasping the concepts of the class before the midterm is upon them. They get instant feedback. As soon as they take the assessment, they know what they got. And you can also set up parameters in VISTA to not only show them if they got it right or wrong, but you can, show, you can explain to them the right answer, and you can also put references in there so that they can review that in the textbook, or you can add your own references. It's, it's pretty wide open as to how you want to accommodate your students, but I, I'm 100% uh, confident, and I've definitely proven that you can get the information to them with the right explanation, and that saves you an immense amount of time. You're not explaining the same concept to 50 out of 100 students 50 times, so it's certainly uh, nice. This is a screenshot that shows a simple course setup. In this case, uh, I've allowed them 20 minutes to do it, and there's 10 questions. And in this case, they're multiple choice, so they pick the right answer, and they save the answer, and they just repeat this process uh, for 10 questions or as many questions as you choose to put in. Now, uh, I, I inadvertently forgot to remove student names, so I can't show you the next slide, but what it would show you is how conveniently, after this assessment was done, the evaluations are automatically entered into columns in the VISTA gradebook. So we're going to skip that slide, and, but I'm pretty certain that you understand how convenient that would be. So the fifth category, innovative technology, uh, the course optimizes Internet access and effectively engages students in the learning process. Again, this is tied in to the video that Anne's going to link for you so you can really get a full appreciation of what Camtasia is and how, again, you, the student can see what you're seeing on the screen and you can talk to it. And I want to just take a second to give you a specific example of where that's applicable. Uh, I'm going to speak to its applicability for College of Business students, but I have done work in the engineering uh, arena and when you're trying to teach a student a program like AutoCAD or SolidWorks, it would have the same purpose. Okay, so let me address SAP. SAP is an ERP, Intersource Resource, Enterprise Resource Planning Software, that um, basically runs a business. It runs all aspects of a business, from purchasing to manufacturing, anything you can think of business-related that a company would do, it can handle. The problem is its interface is a little different than what students are used to. They're used to Microsoft Windows or maybe a Macintosh interface. And even though SAP is a graphical user interface, it is different. So the first semester before I used Camtasia to teach students how to use SAP, I had people lined up outside my office. The first thing in class, I'd have 10 hands go up. And it just took an immense amount of time showing them how to maneuver through this software. When you use Camtasia and they can see what you're doing on the screen and they can hear your voice, you can walk them through the nuances of what icons do what, how you click here to achieve an end result. And I had tremendous feedback from the students uh, that the, the Camtasia made their SAP very, very doable, where they had a tremendous fear of using SAP and, SAP and dealing with it uh, in prior classes. So it removed a great anxiety. 
It saved me and reduced my instructional workload because they all do the same exercise. Their problems are usually uniformly grouped into a given category. So therefore, they have to, all they have to do is run the Camtasia and they can run it as many times as they want and they see just beautifully how it's supposed to be handled. And after the first one or two assignments that are Camtasia, they're pretty much experts and it just, it was phenomenally successful and a huge workload reduction, yay. Uh, so the other point that I wanted to mention is posting the videos on Vista and allowing them to view them on their own time. I'm not going to elaborate on that because I believe I already touched on that earlier, but the biggest thing is increases, increases the classroom time for discussions about the videos. And that's one of the most important aspects of the learning experience for the student. They're visual students. They can see the video. They can hear the expert, the CEO of Domino's Pizza, talking about how he's expanded his business uh, and franchised it worldwide. And then the discussions in class, uh, you have much more time for that exciting part of teaching where you can extract, you can get the students to do critical thinking, you get rhetoric going in the classroom, and it's just, it's just a wonderful tool. And I found it extremely useful. Now, okay. So that is the end of my short presentation. And if you have any questions, you can contact Ann and she can help you out. Now, actually, I think my email, can I make this slide index up? Actually, Bill, I'm going to separate in here and then okay, you, thank if you, you don't mind. No, that'd be great. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you so much for sharing sure. your experiences with the Rubric for Online Instruction and the process you went through to win the Exemplary Online Instruction thank Award, you. for which well deserved. You put oh, a lot you. of work into thank this. Thank um, For anybody who has questions, they're welcome to contact me in Technology and Learning Program here at California State Chico. Uh, my email address is a steckle at csuchico.edu. And then I will funnel them to Bill. Yeah, and I'd like to say for those that aren't familiar, for the Chico uh, professors that view this, that use the resource in the TLT. It's a it's a great resource. It's been extremely helpful. Definitely. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that compliment. Okay. Um, I'd like to ask you a cu couple of questions sure. since we don't have an audience today and we're just okay. recording this for <laughs> other people. Um, would you? Would you suggest to other people who are new to VISTA that the rubric might be a good guide to get started? I think that the rubric is an excellent uh, place to start. And one other thing I didn't really mention during the discussion, if you noticed, I have a lot of customization in my VISTA. I like that because it allows me to bring my personality into my VISTA site instead of just a generic thing, and it gives the students a little better feel for who I am. And and I learned how to do that from taking some of the VISTA seminars in the first place. I didn't know how to make my own icons and change my icons. And I certainly didn't understand the functionality of learning modules. And all of that stuff is addressed in one form or another when you use the rubric for online instruction. It will, it will take you there as a logical uh, sequence or path. Excellent. Okay, ready for a second question? Sure. Now you've obviously said that this has helped decrease some of your workload, especially with the Camtasias that have decreased the number of questions that you get about specific software elements and so on and so forth. So you've decreased your load. Do you think it's made the student's learning experience more effective, um, that they can maybe take less time and have less frustration, less stress about the software? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think it helps the students in a number of ways. First, every student's different. Some students are a little less assertive, shall we say, than others. So they may ask you the question, and based on their personality, they may say, yes, I understand, but they really don't, or they're embarrassed to ask twice. And in situations like that, they can play my Camtasia video that explains how to navigate through SAP 50 times if they want. And they're not putting a burden on me so they don't feel guilty about it. I'm, there's no misunderstanding in the communication. They can play it as many times as they want. So right there alone, I think that helps the students immensely. I think it removes 
a pressure from them. And they have enough pressure, and the more we can stimulate a positive learning environment and reduce unnecessary pressure, I think the better for all, and it certainly accomplishes that. Excellent. I'll finish up with one last question okay. for you. Um, have you investigated through tracking the use of some of these uh, learning objects within your class? I have, and it, it varies widely. I just started doing that uh, this semester, and I notice the log times compared to my classes before I impl uh, applied the rubric. <laughs> I would look at someone for a semester, and they'd been, they had maybe been on my VISTA site to, for 10 minutes, enough time to look at the syllabus or whatever. And I looked at this international marketing class just a couple of weeks ago, and there were people that had logged uh, 10, 15 hours. And I, when you consider the multimedia that's there, there's 20 videos ranging from five minutes to 20 minutes, and there's the Camtasia that leads them through the software instruction and the navigation of VISTA. It certainly um, appears that they have. And also, the point that I want to mention, in my student evaluations, um, we use a Scantron type evaluation here at Chico State. And they also have a section where students can write in comments. And I reviewed the ones from the first semester where I implemented the rubric for my international, the rubric for online instruction for my international marketing class. And out of 50 students, there were about 40 that did the write-in comments. And I would say over 90% of those started off with, wow, we really like the way your VISTA site was set up. It helped us immensely. And I want to make one more point about that. When, when you set these things up in VISTA through the learning module, everything is tied in with the calendar where the student can see when assignments are due. They can click right there and see the assignment. They can go to the assignment and they can go to the learning module, and everything's tied together. So I teach five classes, and some of them are re really large. Once I organize my class, it, it, back to the instructional workload reduction, I can put it out of my mind and I can concentrate on the teaching aspect. So if a student asks me, when's the next test? I'll say, you know, I'm not really sure. You should pop up the VISTA and check. And now they're getting used to it. They don't even ask me. They just automatically know it's really convenient and it's easy to find on VISTA. So it's reducing both of our unnecessary um, workload, basically. That's terrific, Bill. Thank you so okay. much for coming Thank in you. today and sharing your expertise on this course uh, design and redesign, actually. <laughs> and I look forward to seeing how you progress throughout your career here at Chico. Okay. And I would like to ask if you come back at some point and share some more, maybe next year. Sure, that'll be fun because we're going to think about moving some of these courses to completely online, which will be uh, a next step. And hopefully we can be back at you with a little information on that down the road. Okay. And thanks for all your help. You're welcome. Okay. And thanks again uh, for listening to our presentation today. Once again, I'm Ann Steckel with the Technology and Learning Program here at California State Chico, and we have Bill Malinke. I'd like to also thank Jessica Kodai, who's my student assistant, who I couldn't do this without her. So uh, we'll have a few more of these online soon, and that's all for today. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>